Another strong year for the ACC as we get ready to go for this one. All season long, we've seen the teams take a knee for Unity pre-kick. Florida State out there in Garnet, North Carolina and White. Top two seeds, co-champions of the regular season. Only one will hold the trophy at the end of this one. Good cover there from Ron EY to come in and help as the ball got away from Clara Robbins. You don't want to turn over in that part of the field for either of these two teams who'll be ready to pounce. Here is Avery Patterson, all ACC second team selection, gets it over to Emily Colton. Melani Nesbeth does her best just to not concede the early corner. It'll be a deep throw instead for the Tar Heels. An all-conference season for Nesbeth as well as she shifted to a more defensive role in the midfield for the Seminoles this year. Tessa Delrose. All ACC third team and all freshman team pick for the Tar Heels from her left back spot. Loves to get forward. Here she is with Jody Brown defending Libby Moore. Number 20, the holding midfielder to start this one for the Tar Heels, but it is out of bounds. See the first real touch from Sam Meza for North Carolina, number one. One of those key players in midfield for the Tar Heels, who's certainly not at full strength, has been having to sit out of training for the most part, as the Tar Heels just need to have her on the field. And as Anson Dorrance told us yesterday, an 80% Sam Meza is still going to be in my starting lineup. She's just that good. Yeah, she's such, such an important piece for North Carolina, whether they're in the attack, but also defensively, just feisty in her positioning. And here's Brown again, just baiting Della Rose to be able to find some space in behind. Gets a little help as it bounces over to Beata Olsen from the end line. Allen had a touch, and it's another touch out of bounds, and it is touches like that you have to be wary of. You do not want to give Jenna Nicewanger any extra opportunities from the corner. Well, this is one of the goals for Florida State coming into this game, to make North Carolina feel uncomfortable, face their own goal defensively, finding some space in behind. Brown in particular, to be able to drive to the end line and look for the runners coming in late into the box. Three assists and one goal directly from a corner this season for Nicewanger, who bends it toward the goal. It's headed away by North Carolina. Looks like it goes out on the other side. Should be another seminal corner, but it's not. It's called a goal kick, so that must have been in the eyes of our referee, Nicole Green. A touch from Florida State somewhere in there. And with Nicewanger on the end of a lot of these set pieces for Florida State, that will be a key. The delivery, the quality of the service to give players like Ejigini, even Robbins, who's good in the air, Nesbeth, who can get on the end of them, the opportunity to be able to make a play, especially on the corners. Meza on it now for North Carolina. Nice Wonger picks it up in the midfield for Florida State. Emmy Allen will come out to get it. Redshirt freshman, maybe a little overlooked this year. I thought that was a fair point made by Anson Dorrance when we talked to him. She had two saves in that shootout in the semifinals against Duke. And think about what this defense has done. A beat up North Carolina defense at that. They've had three center backs go out as Nice Wonger tries to feed Brown. And yet still, they have given up one goal since their last loss, which came on October 1st at Virginia Tech. Yeah, in the last seven goals in the game, excuse me, you have to give a lot of credit to 22, Tori Hansen on both sides of the ball. She's been the mainstay on that back line, the vocal leader, their senior, but she also has seven goals on the season, has been so influential off of set pieces, penalty kicks when she's had to step up. And that's what I'm talking about with the players out. I mean, you start with your All-American, Macy Bell, who goes down right at the beginning of the season. Then her replacement, Kaylee Herr, also out with injury. Julia Dorsey missed a number of games on the back line, four at the end of the regular season. And now Abby Allen also out. So even more responsibility on the shoulders of players like Tori Hansen, who's handled it well. 
And just that last play, the right idea from Nesbeth just to open up, look to see if she can switch the point of play. Heavy pass in the end, but that's something that Florida State's going to have to look for in this game, especially with North Carolina doing such a good job of squeezing to one side. It'll be the opposite opposite wide area that will be open for Florida State all game. Atchigini stepping in. Unable to keep it for the Seminoles. Isabel Cox won the ball in the air. Now Meza on cleanup duty for the Tar Heels, but so too is Clara Robbins, who knows all about playing on this championship stage. She gives it away, though, middle of the field. It's Patterson, leading scorer for the Tar Heels in the regular season. Now to Cox. North Carolina coming in as the one seed, Florida State the two seed in this tournament, although they tied with identical eight and two records, but the tie break and that head-to-head -head meeting obviously paying dividends for the Tar Heels as they got the win 2-1 in Tallahassee late in October. Rankings-wise, this is a top five matchup in terms of the national United Soccer Coaches rankings. North Carolina with number two, Florida State number five in those pools. But you'll see our seeds here throughout this championship. That's what you see next to the team's names on the top of your screen. Foul at the middle of the field will give the Seminoles a free kick. And it's good work from Olsen up top for Florida State, and that's why she's so important in the attack for Florida State going forward. Just her ability to play back to goal, hold up the ball, and then get others involved into the attack for Florida State once they do win it. She's always an outlet and allows for Echeguini, but then also Brown to be able to get in behind, shuts the game. Dorsey plays it up, but it's away from Moore. Nice one or one touch to pick it up. And Tried to see if she might be able to catch that Carolina defense on their heels. Well, it's good defending from Florida State in the right position. An errant pass and the nice longer just tries to go first time. That one just bending away from goal. The right idea to pounce on it. Look for an early opportunity. Nice longer already more involved in this game than we really saw her in the semifinal against Notre Dame. Much more of a transitional game. This game, Florida State doing a good job of starting to get possession, dictating a bit more of the tempo. There she is, nice Wonger. Beautifully collected over to Brown. Jamaican International right across. It's deflected. But her deep's taking no chances, clearing it out anyway. Allie Sentner. Player who missed all of last season, still probably not fully back from the ACL injury that took her out of her, but would have been her first year last year in North Carolina. Here is Cox, the crowd in Carolina Blue cheering her on. Get some help and the cross. And Moxley putting it through the box, but no Tar Heel able to get on the end of it. You just have to watch Meza in the midfield for North Carolina. So good at her positioning, just stays out of the play a lot of the time, waits for the ball to find her and then has time and space to be able to play the final pass or drive at the back line. Going to be an important piece of this game, even with her playing some limited minutes, or as you mentioned earlier, Jen, not being at 100%. Pay attention to these moments, goal kicks. You see how Florida State tries to build it. They take a couple of their defenders way back in the box with Christina Roque trying to start their build from there in North Carolina, having to decide how far up do they press, do they chase, do they start that vaunted Carolina pressure that they've been so known for. And it's an interesting thing this year because we have seen North Carolina put teams under incredible pressure, especially with the depth that, that they have on the bench as well, so they can rotate players to have that energy. But at times we've also seen them just drop back 
absorb the attack from the opposition and then allows them to be able to get into those transitional moments when they do win it. Moxley being forced back by Echigini. Hansen right back up the middle, out of the reach of Colton. move to get herself free. What a job she has done this season, too, playing in what would have been a very unfamiliar position, more of an attacking-minded midfielder or wing player in her career. But EY put into duty on that back line for the Seminoles that had a lot of changes from their national championship year. Think about no more Emily Madrill, Kirsten Pavlisko, Gabby Carl. Three mainstays defensively for the Seminoles. And that's where you have to give Brian Pinsky first year head coach for Florida State coming in and making some moves to some key pieces. We talk about Nesbeth and how good she's been in that holding midfield role, typically an attacker in previous years. Wanted her to get, get her on the field, play more 90 minute games and she's been so critical to their success. Just locking things down centrally, screening the back line, winning balls when necessary, but also her ability to get into the attack serves them well. Robbins, deft little touch. Out of the reach of EY, though. I think throughout this season, we have, as we've gotten to see both of these teams really quite a bit, but for Florida State, it's been that balance for Brian Penske of trusting what's been working for this Florida State program who has been so dominant. Eight ACC championships in the last 11 years. Of course, they also have three NCAA championships, winning last year, also winning 2018 and 2014. So, in the one sense, he didn't want to fix what wasn't broken, but on the other hand, he knew there were some wrinkles he could add. You've talked about that, and he's, I think, done a fantastic job of having that balance and getting it right throughout the season. And when we spoke with him yesterday, him saying, finding times when he's going to interject and coach and when he's just going to stay out of it, because he knows these players know what it takes to win in these moments, just finding a bit of those wrinkles and ways that they can have a bit of an edge in this tough conference. Echigini, ball goes off and out of bounds. It will stay with Florida State. Oni Echigini goes by Joe. Had a goal in the regular season meeting in the fifth minute between these two teams. So getting Florida State off to a good start, but that lead short-lived as the Tar Heels would come back to win it 2-1. Interesting, though, that match in the regular season, the only one all season where North Carolina was outshot by their opponent. However, if you go a little deeper in the stats, North Carolina had the advantage in terms of shots on goal. State in that category, eight to four. But even talking to Anson Dorns after that game, he did feel like Florida State was the more dominant team, particularly in the midfield. We knew coming in to the championship game today, that would be a key in these central areas. Who can win the first and second balls? Once they do calm things down, who can maintain possession? Because both of these teams want to build, but they also have the opportunity and the ability to go quickly when they when they do win the ball. It's about managing those moments. Two shots for the Seminoles so far. One of those on target. Payne looking for a little more in the box. A couple of Tar Heel defenders, Dorsey and then Hansen, getting it out of danger. No shots yet for the Tar Heels in this one. Patterson so tough on the ball, wins it, wants it back from center. Too far in front of her though, that allows the freshman Gilchrist to cover and clear. Well, this is something we're gonna see North Carolina wanna do all game, just wait, hold their position defensively, and then when they can, pounce on these, these opportunities. Well done from the young Gilchrist to be able to make her, her way over and provide good coverage defensively. EY on the other side, crossing the midfield line for Florida State to Echigini. Back to this near side it goes. It's a long run for Brown, a little too long. 
Yeah, and once again, though, those are the opportunities for them to be able to break out Florida State, just finding the weak side. Better positioning from Brown, just a, again, a heavy pass that finds its way over the sideline. If Florida State can connect those opportunities, they'll find a lot of joy in the wide channels to be able to drive to the back line and create in a variety of ways. Because we've seen them be able to float balls in from deeper areas, but also drive to the end line, look for the late runners into the box off of cutback balls. I already saw that earlier in this game from Brown as well. Cox was not having that move from EY this time around. It worked once earlier to get the Japanese international left back free for Florida State. Sentner touched away by Gilchrist. Moxley Sentner sending Meza into space. All kinds of time for Sam Meza in the box. Meza very slow to get back to her feet after that challenge. One that, quite frankly, Florida State fortunate to have gotten out of without even seeing a shot from the Tar Heels. Great opportunity. But I think also a moment where you see Meza not 100%. And look at all the numbers right now back for Florida State defending. I mean, this is what North Carolina saw over and over in the semifinal when Duke had to drop back after they went down a player. Cross from Patterson, a slip in the box from Sentner. Took her out of the mix. Della Rose. Patterson. Payne clearing for a throw. And we'll see how North Carolina handles this because in the semifinal game, not at their best, really difficult for them to be able to break down that low block from Duke. In many ways, just not sophisticated enough to understand where the space was in combination play. Could they get it wide? And it's well done from Florida State. At times, we will see them drop deep into this lower block themselves just to absorb some of their energy, be able to maintain some of the balance of when they're going to go forward and when they're just going to sit back. Well, Tuesday, we'll have the exclusive reveal of the next college football playoff top 25 rankings. Reese and the guys will break them down from top to bottom, have coach reactions, as well as a live interview with committee chairman Boo Corrigan, the NC State Athletic Director. That is 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific on ESPN and the app. Georgia Bulldog fans, no doubt, looking forward to that one, seeing who's going to get the top spot. I think it should be the team who had a big win between the hedges yesterday. Patterson. Space hard to come by in this match for either team. Meza. And right into Clara Robbins, who, by the way, Robbins captain setting a Florida State record with her 105th appearance today. Yep, she's been there a while. It's her seventh season, had an injury year, and of course the COVID year, which gave her another year to play. So she's a two-time national champion, also a two-time ACC tournament MVP. She shows up on the biggest stages for the Seminoles. Had a goal in the semifinal, and before you could even start to think that it might be a one-nothing affair for Florida State or Notre Dame, the Irish came fighting back. And what a tremendous season, by the way, for Notre Dame. Nate Norman being named ACC Coach of the Year. Meza can't split the defense, but does keep it on her foot. Carolina break them down when they get into this situation. It's going to be a challenge. One admittedly they struggled with on Thursday night. Moxley. Colton calling for it in the middle. Moxley opts to go to Cox. 
left's edge of the box. Patterson picking it up, takes a shot and scores! And that's the patience that the Anzadorans has talked about when they are in the build and a team is gonna sit back a bit lower is just wait to find the gaps. And Sentinel does such a good job of popping off the back line, being an outlet, they opt out to take it, and that opens up the gap for Cox to be able to drive this ball across. And then Avery Patterson does the rest of so well to find the ball first time. And then just a little bit of a shimmy to create a little bit of a passage of way for her to get on the end of this ball. And here's a move and then to fire this one pass for okay, who doesn't see it till the end, and that's in the top corner. Really good patience from North Carolina in this build, something that we didn't see in the semifinal. For Avery Patterson, her 10th goal of the season, putting North Carolina out in front. Their first shot of the match, Lori, winds up in the back of the net. And at the beginning of that build, Jen, I was just noticing Sitnor, how she will pop off the back line. She'll stay high originally, but then pop off, and it makes it difficult for Florida State defense to decide if they're going to step with her or they're just going to let her go. They opt to stay, but then it opens up the space for Cox to be able to get in behind to drive that ball across. The assist to number 13, Isabel Cox. A couple of substitutions for the Tar Heels after that goal. Maddie Dahlin, number five. Uh, Speed, freshman out of Minnesota, comes in to replace Cox up top. And then Maggie Pierce, who's essentially been flip-flopping with Libby Moore, that holding midfield spot. They split the time pretty much throughout the match. And of, as of note, Della Peruta, who got the, the red card against Duke, will be out. She's one of the substitutes that would typically come in around this time for North Carolina. She provides a lot of defensive effort, something that Anson Doran spoke to us about. What is his substitutes going to look like coming into this game to be able to lock this game down? Be interesting to see about Nice Wong or even Claire Robbins for Florida State and their ability to get on the ball even more so in these last 20 or so minutes of this first 45. And yeah, that is Talia De La Peruta, who is not available for this game after picking up two yellow cards that wound up with the red card in the semifinal for the Tar Heels. Her younger sister, Tori, is available and she was able to get back on the field for the Tar Heels in the semifinal after missing the previous seven due to international duty and injury. Here comes Delrose, Tar Heels looking for more. Little slip, seen that a few times across the field today. And Patterson knocked down. This will be a free kick for North Carolina. And this was always a question coming into this game with the depth of North Carolina. Not as much mileage on their legs in the semifinal game, not as wide open of a game. And then be able to put pressure on Florida State throughout this match. They draw the foul in a dangerous area, and this sets up a golden opportunity for North Carolina, especially Tori Hansen, who's been so dangerous getting on the end of set pieces. There you see Hansen. And the captains for this Tar Heel squad, seven goals on the season set pieces and penalty kicks, her bread and butter. Moxley serves it, looking for Hansen. A little help as well from Patterson, getting her head to the ball. And typically it's Hansen that's the target on these. It's a good floated ball into behind. Patterson getting on the end of it first, always floating away from the ball, can't make a good play to keep it on frame. And you may have seen the note a little while ago, North Carolina 13 and three when they score first. Interestingly, this is only the second time all season Florida State has conceded first. The only other time that happened was a loss. It was on the road in the regular season at Notre Dame. They wound up losing that one for nothing. There have been times in games though where the Seminoles have found themselves trailing and have gotten their way back to semifinal being a perfect example, as it was 3-2. Notre Dame advantage, Corbin Albert and her hat trick, who was stealing the show for the Irish, and then Florida State able to come back and tie that match.
force it to overtime and eventually penalty kicks. Nesbeth could feel the pressure coming from Colton on her back. Ball still is not clear for Florida State. And it's well done from Nesbeth just to clear, but you can see how slow Florida State is to gain ground defensively to make this game more compact. And it's allowed for North Carolina to be able to start to control this game in those central areas that we talked about. Yeah, Patterson picking it up in the middle, looking for Darlene. If she has a chance, she will get there first in, mo in most cases, but a little too much pace on that ball. And with the stark contract is, contrast between these two teams in terms of the depth, we were curious about how Florida State, with that game being so wide open against Notre Dame on Thursday, how they would handle the tempo does feel the goal for North Carolina sucked a bit of life out of them trying to play out of the back. It does look like Roquet will go long on this attempt. Put themselves under some unnecessary pressure in these last few minutes, trying to build out of the back. Tar Heels playing with the lead and the momentum at the moment in this ACC championship. Third time in the last five years, it's North Carolina and Florida State for the ACC title. Fourth in the last seven, and one of these two teams has won the last nine. Of course, they'll make that 10 in a row as one of them will again win it this year. It's a hot afternoon, by the way, unseasonably <laughs> hot in Cary, North Carolina. It was mid 70s and muggy. Kick this one off. And we'll see how that plays a role, especially, again, we talk about the depth that North Carolina has, but that is such an advantage for them to be able to press, win first and second balls. And when we talk about this being a dress rehearsal for the NCAA Final Four, being able to bounce back on a Sunday midday when it is hot and still have that energy, it's going to come down to Florida State to get themselves back into this game, managing those moments, keeping possession, finding those wide channels, Brian Penske having a word with a referee, Nicole Green, on the sideline at the moment. Not entirely sure what that was all about. It's like there are subs ready to come in for both teams. And to your point about the depth, you'll see that a lot more. And, and does Brian Penske then feel the need to counter where he does not necessarily feel he has as many as he would like to bring in off the bench as North Carolina does. Very small roster for Florida State this year. 21 on the roster compared to nearly 40 for North Carolina. Good ball into the box, but in the end it's too close and Emmy Allen scoops it up. Well, because of that small roster for Florida State, it is going to be imperative that they find those moments, win to slow things down, keep possession. And this is a Florida State team that is set up for that. They want to be indirect at times, but they also have the ability to play in behind. They just have to have the willing runners. So it's going to be about picking and choosing those moments when they do go forward quickly. Nice Wonger trying to catch Allen off her line. Well, our next ESPN2 Bundesliga match is Tuesday afternoon with Bayern hosting Werder Bremen. Bayern trails Union Berlin by a point for the first time in the standings. Our coverage begins at 2 Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific. There are some of those reserves making their way onto the field for North Carolina. Bella Sember, Ali Gambone, Ruby Grant, Emerson Elgin, and Paige Tolentino. The five to come on for North Carolina. Nice wonger. Olsen going right at Elgin. The redshirt freshman who just came in on defense, and that does shift that back line for North Carolina a little bit in terms of who plays where. 
And it's a corner kick coming for Florida State. Well, nice on there, finding some good space in between the lines in this game already. That final ball is the one that leads to this corner kick. Allen calling for it, got a mitt to it. Echigini will earn her team another corner. And Nice Wonger will make her way over to do the honors. Fourth of this first half coming up for Florida State. Tar Heels, who had a season-high 12 corners in their semi, have yet to have one. And it's well done for Echigini just to be able to read where this ball's going to go, understand that she needs to drive, earn another set piece. This is an advantage for Florida State, especially with the delivery of the left foot of Nice Wonger. And so critical throughout this season. It's in the goal! Nice Wonger put it where it could be completed, and the Seminoles tie it up off the set piece. And we knew coming into this game that set pieces were going to be so important for both of these teams, Nice Wonger in particular, with her left foot to be able to drive this ball, put it into the mix. Tons of bodies in the box, and this one finds its way, just bounces off a number of players right on the goal line. It actually looks it like nice its own Wonger. goal. No, I think they gave it to Nice Wonger originally. Let's see, Lori, get a good look at it here. Oh, I mean, come on, that's a Galazzo from Nice Wonger in the corner. Oh, it is already in the goal. Yeah. When it is touched from North Carolina, just right through the mix. Well done from Nice Wonger. Her fifth goal of the season. And just like that, we are tied up. We said it earlier, you do not want to be giving opportunities to a player like Jenna Nicewanger from the corner, one of the top in the country, tops in the ACC in assists. And this time, she doesn't need an assist, she's just going to do it herself. Second time this season, she has scored directly off a corner. And it's just the quality of the service. And Emily, Emmy Allen going up, trying to make the play, it sees its way through. All of the traffic, North Carolina will be upset with giving up that one, just knowing how dangerous Florida State is on those set pieces. Now here's the ball again. You can see it's just Emmy Allen screened in the box around all the numbers. Carolina back the other way, driven in. Gloved by Roque. But that is so tough. It's tough to read the bend, the spin, the angle, all of it. Just right from Nice Wonger. And it's important for Florida State because we talked about those moments of just understanding of when they can put North Carolina under pressure, go for set pieces, look to be a bit more direct, and then start to slow things down, start to move the ball side to side, find the space out wide. And I still feel like there's opportunities for them to be able to hold on to the ball more and utilize Brown and Echigini as they switch to play more often, use the width, pull out North Carolina as much as possible. Well, we wondered how Brian Penske might handle the substitutes. I told you there were just five who came on for North Carolina. Penske says, we'll see your five. We'll bring in four. And this is not something we've typically seen from Florida State throughout the season. These players all come on, but not typically all together like this. Caitlin Zappé, Sophia Wynn, Emma Bissell, and Maria Alagoa, the subs to come on the field for the Seminoles. So a very different looking front line. Bissell, number 17, was the closest to the ball just there. Here is Robbins who picks it up. This is her territory. And great defending from Claire Robbins in the right position just to win that ball back quickly, higher up the field for Florida State. This is a player that wants to go to goal quickly. Here's a poor touch for North Carolina and then Claire Robbins just spins herself out of pressure, opts to go herself. That one's always rising, doesn't get a good look on it, but well done in terms of her positioning defensively. And this is one of the reasons why Pinsky keeps her on the field throughout the match. Her defensive responsibility just to sit next to Nesbitt at times, but also her ability to go forward in the attack. This is Alagoa. Notably, Alagoa, Bissell, and Zappé all were involved in the game time goal for the Seminoles. 73rd minute of the semifinal. Robbins goes down, no whistle blown.
at the moment. North Carolina content to let the two Florida State center backs pass it back and forth. Olsen flicked it central, just didn't have a runner to get onto it. Payne trying to get out of the corner and does well to knock it off. A Tar Heel set up the fifth corner of this first half. You know what happened on the last one for the Seminoles. However, no nice swanger at the moment, but Alan Go has also been really good. Had an assist off a corner kick earlier this year. She'll take it. Allen wants it. Had pressure in her back, and there was contact there. The whistle is blown. And regardless, Florida State looks dangerous. You see Allen again trying to make a play on it. Goes through her hands. She is awarded the foul. The number of players, Florida State, late runners coming into that far post. It's something throughout this game, Florida State should continue to look for driving at the end line, look to see if they can earn the corner kicks as they look dangerous. Pay attention to these moments in the game. Both teams have gone to their bench. Will there be a game-changing sub for either team on the field? Gambone, Simber, Tolentino, all three coming off the bench for the Tar Heels in this contest. Pierce. Moxley, she doesn't leave the field for North Carolina. Gambone, forced back. Hansen slid over to that right center back spot when Julia Dorsey went out. Emerson Elgin came in. Where Nesbitt might have had an opportunity yeah, to go I was forward. Just, I was just going to say, those are the opportunities where Nesbitt has to look forward. Even if you're just playing defeat, you put yourself in a great position to win the ball back. Those are the moments when you have to take advantage of them. Instead, now you lose possession. It allows for North Carolina to regroup in their own attacking half. And it wound up being a really awkward ball back to Christina Roque to have to handle. There has to be recognition, though, from other Florida State players as well, not just Nesbeth. As soon as that ball is turned over, you see Nesbeth facing forward. Have to be a willing runner to get in behind. Ruby Grant. Back on it and is coming from an offside position. Flag is up. Because, Jen, these are the moments when you think about substitutes coming in and being game changers. Well, you also just have to manage the game of understanding when you're going to start to put yourself under pressure. All of this play for North Carolina ultimately called offside, but starts with that ball back from Nesbeth that puts them under unnecessary pressure. Great game so far, as would be expected between these two perennial champions in the ACC. North Carolina through Avery Patterson scoring first in the 23rd minute. Jen, a nice wonger, directly off the corner kick to even things up in the 31st for the Seminoles. Emily Murphy, number 35, is out there in the attack as well. You see her running for this ball for North Carolina. Won't get there. Well, the ACC Fall Championships continue today. You've got men's soccer quarterfinals going on. Those start at 2 p.m. Eastern. Each match over on ACC Network and the ESPN app, the home of ACC Championships. of wonderful soccer to watch over the last few days and this weekend. A lot of championships happening today. 
including this one in the ACC. Big 12 coming up next for you after this one is over. Somehow the ball stays in bounds. And Flynn will play it back to Roque. Darlene there to challenge. There was a little bit of contact there, both with ball and body. And if nothing else, right, Lloyd Darlene is making Florida State think about that pass back to Roque. Well, it's one of the things, not only does she have the speed, but she just waits, baits the defenders, and then goes for it to put them under pressure. Really good asset to come off the bench for North Carolina. And a player who may have some fresher legs than she typically would did not play as many as many minutes as we normally see from her in the semifinal because really that position she plays is one of the ones that Anson Dorrance told us was sacrificed when they went down a player. Couldn't bring her on as much as he typically did or would. Alagoa wanted to pick this up for Florida State. Moxley there to help. Just over four minutes to play in our first half from Cary, North Carolina. Florida State and North Carolina, the co-champions in the regular season in the ACC. That ball seemed like it was rolling forever. Maybe felt a little nerve-wracking for Seminole fans as those are the types that can be picked off and feasted upon by the Tar Heels. Well, the game certainly has slowed as of the last 10 minutes or so. Both teams just looking to play a bit more in combination instead of more direct. A few errant passes on both sides. But to be expected on a Sunday match in the middle of the day, and more hot and humid, as you mentioned, Jen, than we expected. Zappé intercepts for Florida State, has Olsen central. Good defending, though. Em Emerson Elgin coming over and slowing down Zappé. I haven't seen her get up into the attack as much in this match as, well, especially she did in the semifinal and as much as she typically likes to. I would say that's true for the outside backs of both teams so far in this one. They've had to stay back and defend a lot. Yeah, the only player that we've actually seen get in. Well, Gilchrist wants Roque to get this, and Roque wise to come out and clear it because it was not going to make it to her to pick up with her hands before Darlene would have gotten there for North Carolina. Yeah, another risky play for Florida State in the back. Just waiting for those moments. Good turn centrally here. But the only play that we've really seen, going back to the previous point to get into the mix, is, is Moxley, the right back for North Carolina. We've seen her pinch in at times, create those overloads in the, in the center of the field. And there's the, the good little turn. It's just a late challenge in the end. I'm not so sure that was a, a foul on Florida State. Just looked like both players going for the ball. Emerson Elgin to take it for the Tar Heels. No shots in nearly 20 minutes for North Carolina after they had the game's opening goal in the 23rd. That can be championship soccer for you, though. You know you have to take advantage of your opportunities when they get them, and I think you could say both teams have done that so far. Single digits and shots combined. Five for the Seminoles, two for the Tar Heels, one goal apiece. Chance for Olsen. Uh, the ball had to be right. One and there are opportunities for Florida State One once minute. they do find that defensive structure and the ball's turned over to be able to go forward quickly. It's just the final pass letting them down, the connection, whether it's too heavy, just away from Olsen on that last play, not allowing them to be able to connect and get forward with numbers. 
coming on now for these final 16. 40 seconds or so Kelly. for North Carolina. Kelly. Tori Del Peruta, a freshman, mentioned earlier. Her sister Talia not available to play in this game due to the two yellow cards, which eventually turned into a red card in the semifinal. But Tori, really one of the better offensive weapons for North Carolina early in the season before she went out to play with the Italian U19 national team and then had an injury and was out the last seven of the regular season. 10, 9, 8, Well, this seven, feels about right, six, I would say. Five, Tied up one four, to one between these three, two regular season co-champions after our first zero. 45. Yeah, even match between the two of these. Screaming opportunities to look for combination play on both ends, but a bit of a slower game, and you expect that with a quick turnaround. Both of these teams going to double overtime, penalty kicks in the semifinal match, and just really feeling each other out, finding ways that they can take advantage in the attack. North Carolina scoring first, Florida State answering, which knocks us up at one in this first half of this ACC championship. Both teams will get together, try to figure out their strategies for the second half. We're waiting. Well, it was a magical moment from Jenna Neiswanger, to be sure, that tied this game in the 31st minute, putting the ball into the back of the net directly off of a corner kick. And that's exactly what you and I were talking about, Lori, before we got Coach Penske on there. Pick your moments. That's not the kind of moment you want to start the second half with. Luckily for Florida State, they wind up back on the ball. Here is Nicewanger, the goal scorer for the Seminoles. Robbins looking for Olsen. Ron Ewai. Two Tar Heels converge to try to get it clear. Heather Payne back in the box, gets past Brown. Allie Sentner looks up, notices nobody else in white for North Carolina. So she wisely holds it up, gets it to Sam Meza. Well, that's well done from Florida State, because coming into this game, we talked about the two center backs and, and Nesbeth sitting right on top of them, providing the cover, the balance, especially when Sintnor pops off the back line. Do such a good job of just slowing her down and then ultimately winning the ball and, and winning the, the possession back. Lauren Flynn, junior out of Arlington, Virginia, carrying it forward. Now the ball makes its way back to Nicewanger, Jody Brown. Overlapping run from Payne. Both teams really so many weapons in the attack. You look at Jody Brown, six goals, six assists on the season for Florida State. All ACC first team selection. Beata Olsen in the middle, five goals, two assists. And then. Oni, Joe Echigini on the other side. What a great trio. And then you add in Nice Wonger and Robbins underneath him. Can't mess with the throw in. As that's the delay here as North Carolina will try to take it again. Well, I'll be curious to see if there's any adjustments from Florida State and how to get Echigini and Brown into this game a bit more than we saw in the, the first half. Those two players put in a ton of mileage in the semifinal game, not only to stretch the game in the attack, but also their ability and their willingness to work back defensively for their team. Some of the best in the conference, no doubt, would have some tired legs today, but they are an important piece to this Florida State team, not only in the build, but also in those transitional moments. So they can find, so can they find them more often in the second 45 because they're dangerous when they do get on the ball. Meanwhile, what are you looking for for North Carolina? Because that's another team with a lot of different weapons when you look across their attacking group of players. Well, one of the areas they did so well in the, in the first half when they had them. Let's see if this play develops. <laughs> yeah, we'll see what Florida State does. Is this one of those moments that they take advantage of getting up the field quickly at Chagini, edge of the box. Now nice Wanger can strike from here and does. Saved by Allen Kopta. Put back. The question we just asked is how do we get Echigini and Brown involved in the attack for Florida State? 
And this is how you do it. It's nice, Swanger. Good patience. They find Nine Swanger right on top of the box. She has to go herself. That's a low driven shot. Allen can't keep a hold of it. And then the presence of mind for Brown to follow this up quickly, unmarked. Here's the initial shot from Nice Wonger that forces the rebound. And then Brown just loses her mark. And that is an excellent goal to the far post. First time for Brown in a tight angle to put Florida State up two to one here in the championship game. Ooh, she giving she a little shh over to the crowd, isn't she, Lotta? Carolina Blue clad fans is Jody Brown gives Florida State the lead. And it's just excellent awareness from Brown to pounce on that first time. We just mentioned how important those two wingers are for Florida State on both sides of the ball. A good look from Nicewanger to take her opportunity, keep it low, force the rebound. And then Brown there for the put away. Great start to the second half for Florida State. And, you know, you were just asking Jen about North Carolina and how they get themselves into this game. Well, they do a good job of once the ball is turned over to be able to find space in between the seams that we're seeing here, but they have to connect their Florida passes. State goal scored by number 10, Jody and they Brown. have to look for Sintnor, one of the best players in the semifinal game against Duke to be able to pop this off the back the line two, and then Jenna create Nicewander. the space in behind for her. And that allowed for Cox in the initial goal to the get the, the ball in behind and then play the cut ball back ball back, excuse me, to Patterson. Ten Brown, her seventh of the season. From two, nice hunger in the 49th minute. But mostly for North Carolina, it's just going to be about staying patient, connecting their passes, getting numbers in the build, and utilize their depth, utilize their ability to put Florida State under pressure in their own attacking half, make them feel uncomfortable, don't allow them to be able to build out easily and force those turnovers. See what the Tar Heels do with this free kick as Emily Moxley gets set to take it for North Carolina. Junior from Cary, back in her hometown. Transfer from UNCW after the 2019 season. Get her, get her. Patterson wanted to get there. Flynn beat her to it. Nice Wonger. This is one of those moments you could go if you're Florida State. They do. Great touch broken up by Moore. Here is Echigini, transfer from Mississippi State, joining the Seminoles this season. And it's just something so small, but Claire Robbins positioning defensively so good to be able to win that ball back. And at times has just sat next to Nesbeth to be able to clean things up. This is trouble, though, Sam. Meza, room to move in the middle of the field. Options left and right. She goes right to Cox. At the end line, Cox cannot turn it around and keep it in play. Well, and that's where Florida State has to be careful, leaving themselves exposed when Claire Robbins doesn't make the run forward because this is a player, Meza, who you don't want running at the back line through the midfield if you're Florida State. Right idea. Cox just can't make the play, get her hips around it to keep it in. But as this game starts to open up for North Carolina, especially as they continue to, to fight for the equalizer, gonna look for Meza in between the lines to be able to dictate the tempo, dribble at the back line, look to play the final pass. We'll see what kind of a response we get from the Tar Heels. We mentioned how good this defense has been. The last seven matches, just one goal allowed for North Carolina. Well, already, obviously, Florida State has doubled that in this game. Seminoles taking the lead for the first time with that Jody Brown goal. Just four minutes after halftime. Nesbeth to Nicewanger. Watch that midfield go to work for the Seminoles. It's a recipe for success, but Payne turns it over. And now there could be an advantage, but Tar Heels don't make the right play. No shots for North Carolina even in this match since the 25th minute. Patterson, good work on the ball, draws the foul from Nesbeth.
Patterson up to Sentner. Had such a big game in the regular season meeting between these two teams. She makes a move, looking to set up a teammate centrally. Well, she's going to be key, Sentner. Olsen will try to make a run for this ball. Allen trying to backtrack into the goal. Dorsey recovers. It's off of Dorsey and out of bounds. Corner kick coming up for the Seminoles. Well, this game certainly is starting to open up, and Olsen just on her own, a 2v1 situation. Does a good job of just slowing, her, slowing herself down to try to get a look on frame. This one with the deflection, but well done from Dorsey just to ride it the entire way, get back in a good position. Moving her feet in the end just to make sure that that one's going over the end line. Sixth corner kick coming up for Florida State. None yet for North Carolina, which is a bit surprising. They had a season high 12 against Duke in the semifinal. Is there more magic to be had from Nice Wonger? Nope, not this time. And not only does North Carolina do a good job of earning corner kicks typically, but they don't allow their opponents many. The six by Florida State in this match actually ties for the most that North Carolina has allowed in a game this season. Obviously one of those Proving lethal as Nice Wonger bent it right in for the equalizer in the first half. Here is Brown. Florida State in rhythm is a nightmare scenario for any opponent. They look confident and comfortable at the moment with a 2-1 lead. Brown had the go-ahead goal. Now Payne on the ground in the box. Back heel flip from Olsen. Oh, that would have been special. It's all Florida State right now. Can the Tar Heels exert their will in this match? Well, that space might have been there. The ball to centrally played, though. Well, and the tough thing right now for, for North Carolina is Sintnor, who's been such a critical piece in the attack for North Carolina, is dropping deep to help keep possession. And then there's no one forward filling in the gaps. This is a great sequence. Right idea from Olsen just to try to play it back behind her leg to keep it on frame. But the build-up play allows for Heather Payne, and this is something you talked about late in the first half of Payne not getting forward into those advanced positions like we're typically used to seeing. Well, this time she does because of the patience in the build-up from Florida State. She's the one that plays the ball across. Complete control right now from Florida State. Now it's Echeguini driving into the area. Back to Nicewanger. She'll take another shot. Remember, it was a nice longer shot that was saved beautifully by Allen, but the rebound fell to Jody Brown. That led to the go-ahead goal. This time, nice longer shot is going to give her another look from the corner. Yeah, and we're seeing Florida State do a good job of committing numbers forward, but as soon as they lose it, they have a good defensive structure to be in place to deny North Carolina to be able to get out and then ultimately win the, win the ball back higher up the field. This is the side where that left foot of Nice Swanger can get the in swinger. She tucked it right under the crossbar the last time. Flynn, first to the ball. Back to the ACC assist leader. Nice Swanger looking for Payne. Also had Olsen. Nesbitt, a lot of options in the box. Well, what a ball this is from Nyswanger. Typically so dangerous with her left foot. This one shifts it over to her right, gets her head up, and just whips that in behind. There's runners in the box for Florida State. That doesn't miss my much. Just glances off the header of the head of Olsen. Really good start to the second half for Florida State. And North Carolina just struggling to get anything in the attack. They've gone to their bench now. Three subs have come on. Maggie Pierce, Maddie Darlene, 
and Paige Tolentino. And that Tolentino sub often won when Anson Dorrance makes that choice, looking for a little more attack out of that left back spot. We'll see if it pays off. Good ball in the box to Aline. Her run is blocked, just collided with a couple of Florida State defenders. And I started saying a moment ago, Jen, about Sintnor and how important she will be in these last 30 minutes or so for North Carolina in the attack, just has the ability to find good spaces, find outlets to be able to, to get out on the break for North Carolina. It's just gonna be up slowing things down when necessary, completing the final pass, driving that ball across, but they have to get numbers into the box, North Carolina. Only one runner on that last opportunity. I would expect to hear a whistle pretty soon from our referee. There's been a lot of contact, both teams, and to be fair, she's let it go both ways, but you don't want that physicality to start leveling up. Patterson, Flynn, both going for the ball, out for a goal kick. On Tuesday, we will have the exclusive reveal of the next college football playoff top 25 rankings. Reese and the guys will break them all down top to bottom. We'll give you coach reactions as well as a live interview with committee chairman Boo Corrigan, the NC State Athletic Director. That is Tuesday, 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific on ESPN and the app. Florida State has eight ACC championships, and in fact, they have won the last eight times they have appeared in the final of this tournament. Won or advanced on penalty kicks, either way, taken home the trophy. North Carolina, meanwhile, missed out on the tournament last year, but the previous five years they were in the final. They won it twice in that stretch. 22 times overall ACC tournament winners for North Carolina. Tar Heels trailing the Seminoles by a goal here in the second half from Carey. This is Tolentino. Patterson is doing everything she can to keep control of the ball. North Carolina does win it back. Tolentino. Bounces off a couple of players. Was there a hand involved? All the North Carolina referees in the stand say there was. Yeah, that might be a missed call from the run of play. It did look like it bounced off the hand of, or the arm of Nesbeth as she was tracking back. Yeah, it hit off the North Carolina player first, and then there was some contact with Nesbeth. And there is a handball, a clear handball. Unfortunate for North Carolina not to get the penalty kick but better numbers. And then you might see, Lori Wright, a little more of Florida State in this lower defensive block with the lead, trying to hang on here in the ACC Championship, something that North Carolina admittedly struggled with when they faced Duke. Yeah, it's a clear handball on Nesbeth as she's making her way back. And Florida State escaped that one. Now there was a handball called on the Seminoles in the regular season meeting between these two teams, led to a Tori Hansen penalty kick for North Carolina, which she put away as she has done all season long. Hansen four for four from the penalty spot on the season, had a penalty in three of the last four regular season matches, and then, of course, went into the shootout in the semifinal on Thursday, made her penalty there as well. She'd love another opportunity. Try to take a penalty kick in this one. But that's better from North Carolina to put Florida State in those positions. Start to serve balls in, get runners into the box, and, and that's where North Carolina can be most dangerous. When they commit numbers forward, they're aggressive in their approach. And we really haven't seen a ton of that throughout this game from North Carolina, especially with the amount that they rotate with their players, having a bit of an edge in the energy in terms of fresh legs. An interesting timing here, as you were saying, and I would agree, North Carolina starting to look a little more dangerous. Now they bring in a whole host of subs 
four of them coming on for the Tar Heels. Anson Doran's telling us at halftime he was not pleased with the play of his reserve, so we'll see if they make a positive difference this time around. And then if you're looking at Florida State as well, Jen, and now these are the moments without as much depth with your roster, being smart, deciding when you're just gonna try to build out or just alleviate pressure, get numbers behind the ball, maintain your composure defensively, and also the numbers behind the ball, the structure that you have in place to deny North Carolina the ability to be able to build and, and get numbers forward. Ruby Grant, Bella Sember, Emily Murphy, Emerson Elgin all coming on for the Tar Heels in that last round of substitutions. Just about everybody in white did not start this half for North Carolina. Really, the only two remaining out there are Tori Hansen and Emily Moxley on the back line, the back heel, looking to set up an opportunity for North Carolina. There was a trip called, and it looks like maybe more. We'll see. Yes, a yellow card is shown on the play. Well, this is better from North Carolina and Darlene in particular, who we said could come into this match and, and create some opportunities for herself off of her work and her speed alone. This time gets to the ball first, draws the foul. This sets up for a dangerous free kick. We talked about Tori Hansen, her ability in the air. And there's a yellow card for, for Heather Payne on that challenge. So can the Tar Heels do something with this set piece? This is a very similar spot to where they had one earlier in the match. Hanson at the moment relatively unmarked. There are a couple of Seminoles around her. You can be sure they're keeping an eye on her. Emma Bissell, number 17 for Florida State, just came on. She replaced Piata Olsen for the Seminoles. Darlene, the player who drew that foul from Payne, gets it back here. You know, typically throughout the season, you'll see records for teams of when they score first, when they concede first, and almost always it's a pretty high percentage of games that are either won or drawn when you score first. The oddity really for North Carolina this season is that they scored first in all three of their losses. They also scored first today. Now trail Florida State by a goal. Still 25 minutes to play in this one, an ACC championship trophy. North Carolina took the lead, as I just mentioned, in the 23rd, but then back-to-back -back goals from the Seminoles. Nice Wonger off the corner kick in the 31st, and then Jody Brown off the rebound in the 49th. Nice Wonger getting credited with the assist on that Jody Brown goal as she took the shot that led to the rebound off the save from Allen. Well, it's just a few of these heavy passes, essentially. It's uncharacteristic of Florida State letting themselves down in terms of being able to manage this game more completely. And it's allowed for North Carolina to be able to look for these opportunities. Still though, North Carolina, some of the same issues, just heavy, heavy pass. It doesn't find a runner to be able to get in behind or find the feet just to be able to connect their passes. Tar Heels trying fervently to find their way back into this match. 
have the better of Florida State in the regular season, edged out the Seminoles for the top seed in this tournament. But Florida State trying to make it a three-peat here in the ACC Championship, having won the last two, eight of the last 11. North Carolina, I'm sure, begrudgingly passing the baton to the Seminoles after they were so dominant in this tournament for so many years. It's their 28th appearance. They've won it 22 times. And it's always great to see our commissioner, Jim Phillips, in attendance. Got a chance to chat with him a little bit before the match and hey, this is a busy guy he is always on site somewhere he's attended 22 football games this season i think he was at field hockey right he told us a couple of days ago loves to get in and congratulate these teams on hard fought championships as they earn them and just doing a tremendous job leading the way in the atlantic coast conference Shots 11 to 2 in favor of Florida State in this match. North Carolina was only outshot one other time this entire season, and it was the match in Tallahassee. They wound up winning that one 2 to 1, but Florida State had more shots, and they certainly have more shots today. Carolina, time running out to try to find some offense in this match. go up on the field for the Seminoles, number 18. Brian Penske very pleased with the way his substitutes came on and played in the first half. Alagoa being one of those. Sophomore out of Portugal. Tar Heels make a few more changes. Remember, you are allowed a re-entry in college soccer in the second half, so you may see some players go on, go off, excuse me, and then come back on. Cox, Moore, both back on for North Carolina. As well as Lauren Wrigley, number 11. Anson Dorrance and company trying to find the right mix. Score some goals, or at least take some shots if you're at North Carolina. Right now having to defend this free kick from the Seminoles. They do it well. This is Cox. Ball touched away is Tori Della Pruta. Elgin and Tolentino, two changes on that side of the back line for North Carolina. Well, we're starting to see a few heavy passes on both sides, just getting away from one another, not able to keep keep the rhythm, but this is something we saw in the previous matchup as well, just a really good performance from Florida State, especially in the central areas, dominating the midfield. We've talked a lot about Nesbeth and just her positioning and a really good job throughout this game, and then it's allowed Claire Robbins the ability to get forward at times, but also just sit next to her. It's been difficult for, for North Carolina when the ball is turned over to be able to connect that first pass and bypass the central areas of Florida State. And one of the reasons why they do find themselves up in this game. Beata Olsen coming back on. Lori, excuse me, taking the place of Etchigini. Another Seminole substitution. Returning to the match is number nine, Beata Olsen. She replaces number six, Tony Etchigini. Ruby Grant on the ball for North Carolina, surrounded by a whole host of Seminoles. Cox. And there's the work from Nesbeth again. Just making the play defensively, denying the opportunity for North Carolina to, to release pressure and open up this game even more with getting numbers in behind. 
And then Nesbeth just getting herself in between the ball and the player, draws the foul, regains possession. And Florida State at this point in time, even though there's 20, 20 minutes or so left to go, they'll calm things down, save themselves energy-wise, take every moment they can just to live on the ball, move it, and stall play, and not allow for North Carolina to find any sort of rhythm or breakout opportunities. Murphy takes her time, picks her path. There's a good look back for Grant on the ground in front of the goal. That's what you want to see, though, right? I mean, that's good patience, good passing from the Tar Heels. It is, and it's runners out of the midfield for North Carolina. Once they get close enough, they're not in the break. They have numbers going forward. Starts out wide. Then it's Grant making the run in behind from a deep midfield position. That's the right ball to play it across on the ground. See if you can get runners into the box with good positioning defensively from Florida State to have the cover to be able to relieve pressure right in front of goal. And we saw that a few times out of the North Carolina in the first half of Meza coming out from those deep positions in midfield. So difficult to pick up if you're Florida State just haven't been able to get enough numbers forward to be able to have those runners coming from deep. Well, our next ESPN2 Bundesliga match is Tuesday afternoon with Bayern hosting Werder Bremen. Bayern trails Union Berlin, just a point for the first time in the standing, so it should be a good one. Our coverage begins at 2 Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific. Hopefully my German pronunciations were up to par for that one, tried my best. Did a nice one back into the match for Florida State. She's been able to get a little bit of rest on the bench. But a player who I would say at the moment, Lori, would be the leading contender for this championship MVP award, has a goal and an assist in this match for Florida State, now back on the field. Well, she's done such a good job today in just patrolling the midfield playing off underneath the front line of Florida State. And you know, we asked Brian Pinsky after the semifinal match, she was rotated much more as a substitute than we typically see in these games and felt just as a transitional game against Notre Dame, difficult for her to get involved. Cox getting it to the end line. Ball still bouncing in the box. It did wind up going off of the Tar Heels, so it'll be a goal kick for Florida State. And the commitment from Florida State, regardless if you're tired or not, doing such a good job of getting numbers back behind the ball, stalling the attack for North Carolina, making it predictable for themselves, and they have numbers in the box to be able to make the play defensively. But just to finish my point about Nicewanger, has been so good in this game, just picking up loose balls. She's the one that got the, the tying goal, but then also the shot from distance that led for the go-ahead goal for Jody Brown. This is a performance that we're typically used to seeing from Nicewanger, just controlling the midfield, being the one that's dictating the tempo right in front of Nesbeth, who's picking up the, the pieces defensively. Those last substitutions that just came on for both teams, a final 15 push for both starters returning for both teams. Jody Brown, one of those, she makes a run for this ball, gets between both defenders for Florida State. But good recovery from Moxley, just keep her composure. Nice Wonger. Number 10, Jody Brown. Plays 17. Emma Bissell. This will be a foul against the Seminoles. Okay, well, it's Florida State putting themselves in a better position. They already have players advanced up the field, making it difficult for North Carolina. They do well, though, to keep a hold of it and draw that foul. But just on the previous play for North Carolina, they have to have more players checking back to the ball, at least one getting in behind, but more outlets to be able to open up the game. Right now, it's just one, and it's easy to be defended from Florida State. Dorsey just came back on a few moments ago for North Carolina. Hanson can't get to it before it goes out of bounds. But all those starting attacking players for North Carolina, Patterson, Colton, Sentner, Cox, all on the field at the moment for the Tar Heels. 
who have now gone over 55 minutes without a shot in this match. They average 18 a game. They have two in this one. Snuffed out by the Seminoles so far. Dorsey taking a little too much time on the ball, got herself into some trouble. No shots in the second half for North Carolina. Just have been unable to get into their attack. They're in the right vicinity now, Sender. Can't get turned. Good defending by the freshman Gilchrist. Patterson. We have to give credit to Florida State defensively because they knew coming into this game, Sintner was a player that they had to slow down in the attack. They've done a great job on her. She's been able to find some pockets of space, but ultimately away from goal, checking back deep, not a factor getting in behind. The thing that's let down North Carolina the most is just no second runners getting in behind. You see plays like this of Heather Payne getting to it first. That's really been the difference in the second half. Florida State coming out, winning the first and second balls. Patterson takes a shot. It's right at Roque. First shot of the second half and in nearly 60 minutes for North Carolina. Well, if you're North Carolina, you want Patterson on the ball with her ability to, to find the back of the net. But from this distance, easily handled from OK. It'll be a position that Florida State will be happy with. If this is your only shot of the half. The better energy from North Carolina is starting to push players forward. And we'll see how this shifts for Florida State. Do they just leave Olsen up top? And that allows for North Carolina to start to send their outside backs, whether it's Della Rose or Moxie on this near side, get them forward, start to utilize the width more, and start to pepper the goal with service from the wide areas if you're North Carolina. Another Florida State substitution. Joe Echigini Returns coming back match. into the Number match six, for Florida Sony State. Echigini. Really massive for her team in the semifinal. Team, Had a beautiful Japan. move to set up a penalty kick for Heather Payne in that 3-3 draw against Notre Dame. North Carolina and Florida State have combined to win the last nine ACC championships. We'll make it 10 in a row for one of these two teams to win this year. Florida State with the upper hand in the match and the lead. Olsen has time on her side. Nice swanger. Well, that works out nicely for Florida State. And Olsen's still running strong. Yeah, we talk so much about Ejigini and Brown, and, and rightfully so, and what they bring to the attack. But I don't think Olsen gets enough credit for what she does, always sitting on the back shoulder of the two center backs of the opposition, threatening in behind. And it makes it difficult for the opposition to send players forward because she's always a threat, a willing runner, and then calm in possession when she does win it allows for other players to get into more advanced positions. And now we see Florida State, again, willing just to let the clock go down. But they have players higher up the field. And a lot of that has to do with Olsen and her ability just to get to the ball first in the attack and then connect her first pass. And talk about the variety of ways that this Florida State team has been able to attack in this season under Brian Pinsky, whether it's direct, whether it's in possession. And really, Olsen has been one of the the keys to that variety of play. 
Well, here's our week nine Monday night football matchup. Lamar Jackson and the Ravens lead the AFC North by a game there in New Orleans to take on the Saints. That's eight Eastern, five Pacific on ESPN, ESPN Deportes and the ESPN app. We also have the Manning cast over on ESPN2. Our coverage begins with Monday night countdown at six. Darlene has come back into the match for North Carolina. Talked about all the times these two teams have met on big stages. This is their ninth meeting in the ACC championship. North Carolina winning the first five encounters. The last three have gone to the Seminoles. That includes 2018, a year in which they would meet again in the national championship game. Florida State winning that one too. We always talk about this ACC tournament as being a prelude to the NCAA championship. We especially could feel that way this year. The College Cup will be right here in Cary, North Carolina. That's the first weekend in December, so all the NCAA postseason action will get going. Have the selection show coming your way this week and find out where all the teams land. ACC, once again, should be well represented. Christina Roque on her birthday. Having a good one so far. She was named ACC Goalkeeper of the Year this year, Roque, first year of the award. And a really good second half performance from Florida State, Jen. Just their ability to, to get players going forward but also just defensively in the right position, getting their defensive structure correct. So even when North Carolina looks like they're gonna be able to get numbers forward, they have players back, they make it predictable, and it's easy for them to regain possession. And here's the last opportunity, a clear handball in the end. But you see the cover around the ball for Florida State, had doubles, two players around North Carolina really stalled any efforts for them to be able to go forward. Good reminder, though, about that handball that was missed. Referee just didn't see it. That could have been a penalty kick for North Carolina. They didn't get it. How might that have changed things? Now they get the set piece on the free kick. Sentner's first touch takes her to the corner. Working against Payne. Brown there to help defensively as well. Everybody up for North Carolina in the box. Darlene heads it back toward the goal. Nobody there on the far post. It winds up being easy off the bounce for Roque. And we're used to seeing the commitment of North Carolina getting numbers into the box. Darlene, since she's come on, it's actually Patterson that gets on the end of it. Her and Darlene on the far side. Patterson does well just to play it across, but no runners into the box for North Carolina. Roque, easy grab. Hachigini takes the shot. I was about to say she has no interest in going forward. Well, apparently she does. <laughs> At the moment, with what would be the game winner if the score holds 2-1, Florida State trying to win their third ACC championship in a row. Brown's goal coming in the 49th minute. Tori Della Peruta back on the field, replacing Cox in the attack for North Carolina. Here she is with a touch on the ball toward Darlene. That's going to be a foul against North Carolina. As Flynn is still down. Yeah, just a hard challenge for Flynn. Flynn and Gilchrist done really well. Stay connected as unit throughout this entire game. The two center backs for Florida State and you know, loud for, for players like Heather Payne, Jen, to get forward at times. We've really developed into a quality center back pairing. Limited North Carolina here today to, to very little in the attacking half. A 
Olsen, great touch. Echigini. Maybe would think twice about taking a shot this time around and just try to play keep away. Not easy though with two Tar Heels around her. She does a good job, stays with Florida State for the throw. that ACC championship MVP this year, but she won't mind handing that trophy off to one of her teammates if the scoreline holds for the Seminoles. Robin's the winner of it the last two years as the Seminoles won the championship. And that contingent of fans in Garnet hoping to see their team hold on for four more minutes. Good crowd even up into the upper deck here at Wake Med Soccer Park for this ACC championship. And this has been a really good performance, as we mentioned, Jen, from Florida State in the second half. Very even in the first 45. Florida State did it well to, to stay composed after going down a goal but then came out out of halftime, and really this has been their entire 45 minutes, controlled the play, limited North Carolina. When they do win the ball, tried to get into the attack. Good defensive structure that has allowed them to be able to build. And at times like this, have managed the game really well, slowed things down when necessary. Haven't allowed North Carolina to get into a rhythm and just really been able to take control of this game through just the run of play, but also, the managing of these minutes. I mean, that was the eighth corner kick for Florida State. North Carolina has yet to earn one. Four shots for the Tar Heels is by far their season low. Prior to this game, the season low was 10 for North Carolina on the season. Just have not been able to figure out this Florida State team. Jody Brown might see herself get a card for that play. Yep, she will. Really unnecessary, but she picks it up late. Well, she won't mind one bit to get this card. Just getting tight, slowing down North Carolina, making sure these last few minutes they don't get any quick looks. You see North Carolina trying to go quickly once the foul is called, and then Jody Brown steps in. That's what she's called, giving the yellow card for. Actually, a very smart play from Jody Brown, just to slow things. And Nicole Green trying her best to maintain control here in these last few moments. I don't think she was quite ready for that restart yet. So North Carolina will try to get no time. Has gone off the clock. It is stopped on the yellow card. 2.37 left for North Carolina to try to find an equalizer. I'd be surprised if all those Tar Heel fans are going to allow that let's go Knowles chant to overpower them. But at the moment, that is what you hear at Wake Med. Tolentino wins it in front of the Tar Heel bench. The shot from Della Peruta. Not too challenging for Roque. You can bet we'll take her sweet time getting this ball back in play. And Roque is going to say that Del Peruta was too close to her. That's why she was waiting. Now, there is a card shown. I think it was against Roque for time wasting, but she'll say she was looking at Della Peruta, who did not give her the appropriate distance away from the ball to put it into play. That's why she was waiting. Yeah, and I think there is a... And actually, it looks like maybe they both got a card. Initially, it said Florida State had the card. Now we're being shown that it's on Della Peruta. A yellow card has been issued. 
Okay, so let's get this corrected. Back and forth we went on who that card was actually against. They are going to say that it was against Roque. So this will give North Carolina the ball. It's an indirect free kick on that infraction in the box, so they cannot put this directly on frame. Or if they do, they need somebody else to touch it. It's a slowage of play for Roquet, and understandably that she's given the yellow card, but also she has an argument with Della Peruta not giving her the amount of space. But regardless, Nicole Green sees it as strictly a yellow card on Roquet, and all of a sudden, these last few minutes, we have a dangerous free kick, and as you mentioned, it is indirect. Now, I find it interesting, Lori, that Tori Hansen is one of the three over the ball for North Carolina right now. I don't imagine she'll stay there. She's got to be one of their best targets. Just a matter of how they get it to her. And there she does go trotting into the area. So an opportunity here for North Carolina to level this thing. Patterson and Sentner over the ball. You can hear Florida State saying, don't jump. They don't want to touch it. There's a touch, the shot, no. Opportunity gone by the wayside for North Carolina. Well, they did have to do something in terms of it being indirect. It was going to have to touch, but just get a little too tricky. Just have somebody touch it and then fire that force Florida State to keep their wall, not jump. See if you can keep it low and force Roquet. Just don't even test, don't even get it on frame to force Roquet or even a rebound off the wall. And Roquet will get the yellow card, but they're, they're out of danger on that last, really, what could be one of the last opportunities for North Carolina in this game. Well, North Carolina has not had many chances in this match. They will rue that one, at least not forcing a save out of Florida State. One minute, one minute. A minute left, though, standing between the Seminoles and their third straight ACC championship. Florida State has had North Carolina's number in these championship games since they won their first. Eight of the last 11, looking to make it nine of the last 12. That, as you would say, Lori, is dominance for Florida State. And, and a dominant performance here today. And You know, the biggest question, Jen, coming in for us is, how was Florida State going to be able to, to manage this game after end-to-end -end action, wide open game against Notre Dame, going into double overtime? Yes, North Carolina had the same result, but a different game in terms of not as wide open, not as much mileage on the legs, and we really haven't seen that from North Carolina in this game. We thought they were going to be able to put pressure with the depth that they have, and a lot of credit to Florida State, especially in the second half, coming out, managed the game when necessary, getting the go-ahead goal from Jody Brown early on in the second half, and then done well to slow things down when necessary. All right, this could be it for North Carolina. Everybody, including goalkeeper Emmy Allen, up in the box for the Tar Heels. Is there one more shot for North Carolina? Tolentino on the ground, in the box, still there! It's blocked a couple of times. champions once again. Well, it looks like it could have been a little bit of dramatics there in the last few seconds of this game, but ultimately Florida State holding on, getting numbers behind the ball, and doing what they need to do to win this championship here today. Fantastic performance from the Seminoles. Bouncing back to get the equalizer from Nyswanger in the first half. They stayed calm, they stayed composed early on after conceding. And then just pure dominance in this second half for Florida State, managing the game so well. And deserved winners here today. The Seminoles hoisting the trophy again. And not, as you said, without a little bit of dramatics there in that last few seconds, North Carolina 